Today, we're uncovering how the hackers can break into not only our phones, but national security systems. Please listen to me. They're trying to silence us, but we will not be silent. We can't let the hackers win. Share this mess. Our fate ends on it. Ooh, Hyrule Warriors is coming out. Let's do a Zelda video. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that, quite honestly, ran a poll on Twitter about what the next episode should be, saw Zelda win in a landslide, knew a new game was coming out, and decided that stopping our hacker overlords could wait another week. Seriously, look at the results of this Twitter poll. You only have yourselves to blame. So I'm excited about Hyrule Warriors since it's probably the biggest thing to happen in the Zelda franchise since the game became a boat simulator with Wind Waker. It's a complete change of form for the series, focusing on beat up style action rather than adventure style questing and dungeon exploration. It's a cool twist breathing new life into one of gaming's oldest and most beloved characters, and apparently not just breathing new life, but injecting him with steroids. Because from what I've seen from the gameplay so far, this new version of Link looks like a god of war, cutting through waves of enemies like butter. Look at that! It's like Chuck Norris in a tornado had a green clad elf baby. <laughs> what the heck? That's the fire rod? This thing? Man, 16 big graphics just don't do that item justice, I guess. Needless to say, this Link is a beast. And even though it's been stated that the game falls outside of the timelines that Nintendo has set up around the series, it got me thinking. Clearly, not all chosen heroes are created equal. So in a battle royale, which incarnation of Link would prove to be the deadliest warrior? Today's episode plans on putting them to the test. In total, there have been so many Links in this franchise, 11-ish so far, and each with a nifty little title. There's the Chosen Hero from Skyward Sword, Hero of the Minish from Minish Cap, really creative title there guys, the Link from Four Swords, whose name doesn't exist that I could find, the Adult Hero of Time in Ocarina, the Child Hero of Time from Ocarina and the Majora's Mask timeline, and that's why I said 11-ish, cause it's the same guy, but split across two timelines. Then there's the Hero of Legend, who spans Link to the Past, the Oracle games, and Link's Awakening, the new Hero of Hyrule from A Link Between Worlds, the Hero of Hyrule, rule, no new in the title, from the original LOZ and LOZ2, The Linkening, and don't get me started on how the one coming before him is titled The New Hero of Hyrule, when this Hero of Hyrule is after him, technically newer in a timeline sense, despite being from an earlier game. <sighs> it's like they made up this timeline lore to tie together a bunch of games that were never meant to have a timeline at all. Yeah. The Hero of Twilight from Use Your Best Guess, the Hero of Light from Four Swords Adventures, and on to the last branch with the Hero of Wind from Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass, and the Hero of Trains from Spirit Tracks. It's a very specific category to be Hero of. Planes and automobiles? Sorry, you're out of luck until Legend of Zelda Enchanted Jetliner. And that, my friends, is the full roster. Now, let's get to comparing. Off the bat, we're going to eliminate the Four Swords links because their true power comes from being able to divide into four separate links. And while that's all well and good for them, we want to measure who is empirically the single strongest link. And the way we do that is via some categories. Sure, there are some obvious ones, like strongest, smartest, most agile, but we need to factor in each hero's mounts, his arsenal, magic abilities, sword skills, marksmanship, underwater maneuverability, cause we all know how tough that can be for him sometimes. and overall level of questing experience. When it comes to pure natural strength, the Hero of Twilight is definitely your guy. Able to wrestle Gorons and carry around enormous balls of steel without any strength enhancing items. But then again, this is the Legend of Zelda series where you're only as good as the strength of your gauntlets, or power bracelet, or handy glove. And while TP's hero had mad guns, he also didn't have the mad accessories to jack up his beefy biceps. And while the Hero of Hyrule could push rocks his own size, and the Hero 
hero of legend could lift rocks four times his size, it was the hero of time who could hurl pillars 64 times his size halfway across the room using his golden gauntlets. And with incredible technique to boot, lifting with the knees and not with the back. Point for you, sir. As for which member of the green team is the smartest, there are a few factors at play. Skyward Swords Link is the only one shown to have a formal education, while other Links just focus on an individual trade or get taught by a tree. But a formal education can only get you so far when you're in a battle setting. You can also judge Link's street smarts off of the difficulty of the puzzles he has to overcome in the game. And a survey of online Zelda forums shows that most people agree Twilight Princess's puzzles were the most difficult, citing both the Ice Block Sliding Challenge in Snow Peak Ruins and the Statue Puzzle before receiving the Master Sword as being the most infuriating of the series. But all the strength and smarts in the world don't matter if you move like a brick. Sure, every Link has a Hylian shield to defend against incoming attacks, but it'd be good to know which members of the Link Horde can run circles around their opponent, or run at all, as most just kinda trot around the map, taking a leisurely stroll to save the kingdom. On this criteria, Skyward Sword Link immediately jumps to mind as the one iteration able to run, flip, and lightly parkour, but he gets winded pretty easily and is forced to drink wheat grass to improve his stamina. Now, if there's one thing that defines an unstoppable runner in this series, it's the Pegasus Boots, which narrows down our candidate pool, but of those candidates, the hero of legend jumps to the top of the heap because, well, he's the one who's actually able to jump. Maybe not in his signature game Link to the Past, but certainly with Rock's Feather in both Oracle games. Twilight Princess also rates pretty high in the agility category because Link can turn into a wolf with really good jumping ability. Which is a nice segue to our next topic, animals. Let's talk mounts. Sure, there's the horsey Pona, but not every Link has her. And some have very different mounts, like the loft wings, the king of red lions, or a train. But while a boat has limited usefulness outside of water and very rarely is Hyrule flooded, and a train is limited by its tracks and is, well, just kinda lame, Epona and the loft wings provide a pretty close match. But as illustrated in Skyward Sword, to operate the loft wing effectively, you have to hang on with both hands, whereas Epona doesn't have that limitation. In fact, if the hero happens to be reincarnated as a trained ranch hand, you can ride while also shooting arrows and sword fighting, as shown by the expert mounted warrior, the Hero of Twilight. And going one step further, he also happens to be the best marksman, equipped with the sniper scope of Hyrule, the Hawkeye goggles. And not just with a traditional bow, but also a crossbow from his time spent in Link's crossbow training. So far, TP has been pretty OP, but what can really make or break a legendary hero is their item stash. And for as cool and super useful as the spinner is, Twilight Princess ain't winning any awards in this category. No, the award for best arsenal goes to... The Hero of Legend! A Link to the Past, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, and Link's Awakening. Come down and accept your prize. With so many quests under his belt, this guy is Hyrule's resident hoarder. The Fire Rod, Ice Rod, Rod of Seasons, Rod Roddy, he's got more rods than you can shake a Deku stick at except he doesn't have any of those. But what he does have is three versions of the hookshot, the vanilla version, long shot edition, and the switch hook. Pegasus boots, rocks cape, magnetic gloves. Do you believe in magic in a young Link's heart piece? He certainly does, possessing two magic canes, three magic medallions, a magic cape, a magic hammer, magic powder, and 13 magic rings, of which he can use five. Even with all that magic, he's still not the strongest spell caster, with the title going to the hero of Hyrule from LOZ1 and two for his ability to heal, summon thunder, and turn into a fairy. N no, like an actual, like, healing fairy, not, I mean, I mean, he is kind of like a fairy boy. He's, he's more of an elf, really. But when it comes to items, no other Link comes close. In addition to items, spanning four games also makes this Link the most experienced adventurer of the bunch. In fact, this guy is such a pro, he goes on whole quests in his sleep. Like this video if you get that inside joke. It'll be our little secret. Seriously, though, 11 dungeons in Link to the Past, 9 in Oracle of Ages, another 9 in Seasons, another 9 in Link's Awakening, plus mini dungeons? He's done more dungeon crawling than a typical character in Diablo. Which brings us to the final two categories. Underwater ability goes to... <laughs> 
Uh, no, definitely not old Iron Boots over there. It's a close call between our two frontrunners, the Hero of Legend and the Hero of Twilight. The former can swim very easily using the mermaid suit, and he's got his trusty seed shooter to use underwater, but he also has the uncanny ability to use his sword. And not just use his sword, but use it fast. Literally hacking through the competition. By contrast, Twilight Princess's Link has the Zora armor, which allows him to swim and breathe underwater, and though he may not have the use of his sword, he has the added benefit of water bombs. The ability to use a sword underwater, though, trumps those bombs, so slight advantage, Hero of Legend. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, any battle between Links is likely going to come down to a sword fight. Just look at the matchups against Dark Link. So as our final category, who is the greatest swordsmith? And while well, the Hero of Hyrule learns some upward and downward slashes, and Minish Cap Link does a whole training series with the Blade Brothers and Tiger Scrolls, it's Twilight Princess that once again takes the title. By training with the Hero's Shade, our Elfin Ranch Hand learns techniques that no other Link has ever been exposed to. The Mortal Draw, the Helm Splitter, the Back Slice. These are just a few of the highly advanced maneuvers the Twilight Hero has at his disposal. And when your closest competition is Horizontal Swipe or Awkward Wiimote Stab, you've basically got your competition licked. So with all that being said, let's tally the results. Can we get a drum roll, please? not quite what I was expecting, but okay, great. The most powerful Link is the Hero of Time, Child Edition. What? I demand a recount. Where are the hanging chads? Okay, dated references to the 2000 election aside, the surprise winner of our little contest is the young Hero of Time. And all thanks to one game, Majora's Mask. If it was just left to Ocarina of Time, young Link gets a slingshot, a boomerang, some sticks and nuts to play with? Lame. And when you really look at it, in Majora, he just gets a hookshot, a couple of arrows, and a bunch of useless masks. But it's not about quantity, it's about quality and Child Link gets these, which bestow him with the strength, speed, and defense of a Goron, the agility and ability to fly of a Deku Scrub, and you can't become a better swimmer than a Zora. He might not be the best with Epona, but he's certainly good. Spanning two games and with time travel experience to boot, he may not have the whole 38 dungeons under his belt, but he does have years worth of experience. And if you're looking for great swordsmanship, who taught the hero of Twilight everything he knows? This guy. And who is that guy? This guy eventually. And sorry, TP, but for as cool as that wolf form is, you're not the only one to have it. Oh, and if you still don't believe me, there's this. The Last Transformation Mask, the Fierce Deity Mask, equipping you with a sword twice as powerful as the Master Sword, and with a permanent magic beam. The youngest combatant in our little game also happens to be the most powerful. Go figure. There's also a high probability that he's dead, so I guess there's that. Meanwhile, I know we've given the hero of Trains. God, I can't even say it with a straight face. Uh, the Hero of Trains a hard time today, but let's face it, you are, quite literally, the weakest link. But hey, that's not the end, actually, because I'd like to take this moment to answer one of the most frequent questions I get in my inbox from you guys, and that's how I learned to edit when I first started working on game theory, because I'll be honest, I started with zero experience. Have you seen those early episodes? Yikes! And seriously, it was some of the most basic, fundamental things that were the hardest, because I didn't know what I didn't know. Sequence settings, matching frame rates, essential keyboard shortcuts. Well, to answer your question, I was completely self-taught using online video courses. And while YouTube was fine here or there, a lot of the videos were either outdated or poorly explained. The site I actually found most useful was lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A. They had tons of online courses to teach me everything from the basics of Photoshop to advanced After Effects. For me, the Photoshop Essentials, Premiere Pro Essentials, and DSLR videos were probably the three most important ones that I watched while I was building my skill set. And Ryder, Ryder's editing today's video, by the way, you're in college and they're using the same website, right? Right? Uh, yes. Yes, they are. In fact, I'm such a big fan, I'm thinking about paying it forward and becoming a teacher on the site, doing an online video course dedicated to growing a YouTube channel, but that's a project for a later day. Anyway, since this is something that I know a lot of you have been looking for, I reached out and got a hold of the people at the site to offer you a free trial. So if you click the link in the description or type in lynda.com slash matpat, lynda.com slash matpat, you can get a seven-day free trial and watch to your heart's content. And for once, 
Yes, finally, you international theorists, I made sure that it can work for you too, so that should be even better. So hop on there and go nuts. Binge watch as many videos as you can, because it's free, and if you like it, great. You're following in my footsteps. I know I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for them. And with that, I think it's time to sign off. So without further ado, but hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching.